First of all, um, I don't need to be here, and I don't have to be here. I'm here because I want to be here, if you can work that out yourself. Um, th this job, uh, I, when I left Celtic, anybody that was close to me, and um, I told them that it would be very, very difficult for me to retrace my steps in terms of jobs and the ex excitement that I had at Celtic and um, what went with that job and, and the previous jobs were different taking teams that were second bottom of the league and the first year keeping that league for four and then taking a team again second bottom of the league and, and going to Europe. Um, I, I felt it had to be something different. I, didn't, I, I never said to anybody bigger, better, or the rest of it. It had to be something different. And I've got a chance of something different here. Uh, I also have the chance here of... Um, I know who the chairman is. I know where the money comes from. I know you get time. And... Uh, the stability of the club was one of the reasons why I thought, well, you have a chance there to, to develop things the, the way you would like to see a team developing, developing younger players, making better players um, better. So these things uh, attracted me to the job. There's always pressure on you to, to do well, whatever job you get. So all, all I'm hoping to do is do well, make players better, make the team better. Um, and that's what I'm all about. Obviously, people know your track record in Scotland and what you achieved there. Do you feel in some way you've got a point to prove in English football, perhaps you maybe didn't get the credit for what you achieved at Southampton? No, no, I've not got a problem with that. No, I, as I said to you, I, I think if you said even the commentary, if you said to any manager doing there in the bottom ten just now, could you keep your, if you, if, if you said to the chairman, I can keep you in that division for four years, would you accept it? I think you would. Southampton was a wonderful, wonderful experience. I enjoyed every minute of it. Uh, Celtic was truly fantastic and I, and I hope that this can be as, as enjoyable because um, I like to enjoy myself while I'm working. The job's got the stress, whether you're Steve Stoughton taking over at Darlington or, or me taking over here, if somebody took over at Manchester United, there's always, there's always pressure on you to, to do well, whatever job you get. So all, all I'm hoping to do is do well, make players better, make the team better. Um, and that's what I'm all about. Basically, I, I, I try and make players better. Uh, simple as that. And, and, and as for pressure, you get that. That's, that's, it depends what you, how you deal with it and what you call pressure. You're aware of, of, of Gareth Southgate's departure. One of the reasons that was, was said for his departure, there was concerns that the club may not make it back to the Premier League at the first attempt. Do you feel that you can achieve that? Of course I do. I feel like, as I said to you, I feel I can make um, the people who work with better, one way or another. And if I can do that, then we have a chance. Uh, at one point last week, I think we're, we're, we're a point off the Chocolate League, but also two points of 10th place. So that's how tight it is in this, this division. So it's an exciting division to come into. And uh, I was fortunate last week to go and watch QPR Reading last Tuesday, and the standard was excellent. So um, I'm coming to a decent standard of football, that's for sure. Just finally for me, uh... Keith, obviously it's a good appointment for you, you've made that clear, but it's been a, a difficult process. With the benefit of hindsight, I mean, would you have liked things to pan out a little bit differently? No, no, we're delighted that Gordon's here. We've got, we've got a first-class manager, somebody who has experience, and somebody who uh, we, that's Middlesbrough Football Club, have been able to persuade coming out of, albeit a brief retirement, and, and take over at the helm at Middlesbrough. No, we're very pleased with uh, with the way things went. I'm happy to work with everybody that's here. I think you must try and keep the, the continuity of the club, and that's what we'll be doing. I brought Gary Pendry along, and he's been everywhere with me, so I think it's a bit of a double act, and and uh, I wouldn't feel comfortable without him, that's for sure. As far as home record hasn't been the best this season, it, it seems to be more of a psychological problem than anything else. Is that something that has to be dealt with straight away, the home record? Well, if you say it's psychological, then I believe you. Might be, might be some other reason. Have you spoken to the players about that already? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no. Fair enough. Um, so what will you be sort of saying to them ahead of, of the Plymouth game? Uh, I'm not sure yet. I'm not putting that far ahead. I won't exactly say it. I'm kind of... Uh, I've not planned that far ahead. I'm, I've, I'm just finishing off what we're going to do at training tomorrow. I'll finish that with the coaching and I've got some ideas for training. And develop, develop that through the week to try and put in a performance at the weekend. Um, 
I know you've only been here for five minutes, and it is very early to say, but already you've been linked with a, with a couple of, of Celtic players, including Gary Caldwell. Um, any idea in your mind at the stage to perhaps go for him in January? Uh, I've never went that far yet. I've never went that far. I spoke to Gordon McQueen this morning, who's uh, uh, and the scouting staff this morning. There's one or two priorities we're trying to get sorted out, but we've not got to the January thing yet. Not at all. No. Are there any sort of lessons that you think you've maybe learned at Celtic that you're going to apply to, to this job in particular? I can't never thought about that. Born in it. Um, the, the, the fact is you just go along and, it, and if I have learnt something there that I might need, it will pop up in the next year or so or two years, then I'll, I'll refer to that. But at this moment in time, there's usually you've got the same problems in a, in a, in a, in a football club. Um, and the, the, if the best way to solve it is having players that can pass the ball to each other, players who are fit and players who are mentally strong. If you've got that, then there's going to be too many problems. You'll have off-field problems. Um, but these are. I've had so many of these off the field problems. I think I can I can deal with anything. To be honest with you, I think if you've been the Celtic manager for four years, that I could be the Prime Minister of the Great Britain quite easily. I think. You said you're looking for something different, and it will be very different to Celtic, I guess. Well, it's it's it's, it's a special job. Yeah, it's a special job. Um, as I said, I don't have to be here, and I don't need to be here. I want to be here. Sorry? Have you missed it being out? Football, I can easily live without it. Uh, but I can always watch it because it's the first love is watching football and, and playing football. Um, since I've been out, I've played it and watched it. And uh, I've filled my time up with um, plenty of things to do. I've, I've been very busy, me and my wife have been very busy. But when I'm in it, I absolutely love it. But when I'm out of it, I, uh, I don't mope about it. I've got plenty of things to do. But uh, I guess a, a win at the weekend would, uh, would be the best start that you could possibly hope for. Exactly, yeah. You're right. Can we just ask you, this is a relatively short space of time in football in terms of you've been out. Did you have other offers from, from other clubs in that time, or was this the, the, the first time that someone seriously... I've been very, very lucky that when I was uh, out that I could... Um, I had things to contemplate. Uh, for one reason or other, I, uh, it just wasn't right for me, uh, and this is the one I felt was right.